Hello, it's Isabel again. I'm here to do another tutorial for you. Um, again, using everything pretty much from Charming Beads. Um, <clears throat> so, excuse me, I'm losing my voice. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to make a handmade necklace. It's going to be perfect for using for Valentine's. So if you've got somebody you know that would love one, get their partner to pick it out for them get it made quickly so I've already made a little bit because you don't want to see me winding wire for several hours on video so this is one of the roses so here you can see I've used red wire with a red weave it's just simple two and two weave but it's really effective there we go so that's going to be the center and then we're going to have one of these on each side now I've put a little detail just on that one and then we're going to loop it round fix them all together excuse my arm so what we're going to end up with is something like that and then we're going to go into the necklace itself which will again be handmade so I'm going to show you the weave first of all um, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and weave it all, um, but I'll start you off and then I'll show you how to create the rose at the end. Um, but we've got about 25 centimetres of 0.8 gauge wire here. Um, now it's it's been straightened out. Um, this is anti-tarnish copper wire, but as with everything natural copper related, it will end up developing its own natural patina so you can either age it with liver of sulfur um, or you can coat it now as it is and leave it so it looks like this all nice and shiny or you can allow it to create its own natural patina um, and the aging process okay so as i said we're going to start with 0.8 gauge and we're also going to use some 0.4 gauge wire which is here so we start off with the two base wires now i like to, some people I, I weave off the wheel some people don't like doing it that way i find it easier i find there's less waste so i'm going to take a small tail there we go I'm just going to wrap it round once and then we're going to take it round again and we're going to tuck it up nice and tightly. Now I've got my little pliers out here so I can tuck it up front and back just make it nice and tight like that. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter if you do leave a little bit of a tail here. So I've got about 25 centimetres of wire. Depending on how big you want the rose, you can make this bigger or smaller. Um, this is just for aesthetic purposes. I used about 35 centimetres of wire on the larger rose. And about 25 centimetres on the smaller one and on this one. Okay. So there, I don't, I'm dropping my camera, I don't know if you can see, but I've gone twice around the two wires and twice around the base wire again. And then I'm going to take it up and back over the top wire once and twice. There we go, you can see that. So it's starting to get a bit of stability now. You can see. And we just make sure it's nice and tight together. And again, in between the wires. Now you can do this with pretty much any weave. I like the two and two because I like the effect it gives. Um, you could easily do it three and three, two and four, one and five you know whatever combination that you wanted you would be able to use on this okay so 
There we go again. And we're just taking it round like so. Okay. So, there you go. That's the wire. That's the weave started. So I'm going to carry on with the weave. Um, and I will see you at the other side. Okay. Hello, I'm back. Okay, so here's the weave. If you can see that. A bit twisted around there. So we've got almost to the end. So I'm just going to do the last few wraps for you, show you again. So through and through, and then around around you're going to need probably around about a meter of 0.4 wire to do this however if it isn't enough you can always add another weaving add another wire in to extend it and like i said the thing about this is is that you can actually make the roses as big as you want if you wanted to make one big focal point rose then you could do that if you wanted to make small roses again you could do that so I don't know if you just saw that I miscounted and I put three loops in instead of two all you need to do is pull it back one loop and just carry on this wire is quite soft, it's quite forgiving. It doesn't work hard and easily. Um, so you'll find it, it's quite nice to work with. It's very easy to pull back. So as you can see, my little tail is now getting quite short. It's a little bit more difficult to weave. So we're gonna tie it up now. So we're going to take it through and through, round and round. And we're going to take it back through one more time. And we're going to pull it nice and tight. And then we're just going to take a pair of side cutters and we're going to snip it off. Now I've got here a pair of flat nose pliers. So what I like to do is I like to just make sure that that weave is tucked away tightly. This will be behind the rows. So there'll be no sharp points that can get to the skin. However, if you just make it nice and tight like that you're not going to you're not going to have any issues with the weaving unwinding etc so as i said we've got about a 25 centimeter piece there can you see that so what we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half so that the weave doesn't matter about the ends not being equal we're looking for the weave being equal I'm going to fold it and we want quite a nice tight bend. Now, can you see now it doesn't matter that it's all twisted. Okay, sometimes when you're weaving it does matter. On this occasion it doesn't. Okay, so you're going to take it and you're going to separate that way. Can you see? You've still got your curve at the bottom. And then what you need to do is you are going to bring this one round like this. There we go. Can you see? And then you're going to take this one round underneath and round. And you're going to continue to go round 
around and around. And what this is going to do is this is going to create your rows. Okay, so there we go. Now it may not look like much at the moment. So there, we tucked it all round and under. So what we're now going to do is we're going to take a pair of nylon jawed wires. Now I would highly recommend using nylon jawed wires just so you don't damage the weave. You're going to squeeze it down like this. Now you're still working on the back. You're still squeezing from the back. So none of this will be seen. However, the bit that will be seen is right there. So as you can see, we've got two copper roses pretty much identical there which is worked out really nicely and then we're going to have a red one in the middle okay so we're going to move on to the chain next so the chain is going to be made solely from 0 0.8 wire okay i find it quite an easy wire to to work with i, I do a lot with with 0.8 and what we're going to do, depending on how long you want the links, will depend solely on you. Nothing, you know, you might want longer links, you might want shorter links. But you can have them whichever way you want them. So I will do it and I will use a pair of round nose pliers. You can use bail makers, but I'll use a pair of round nose pliers. So what we're going to do... We're going to snip off now i've got about two two and a half inches here and then what we're going to do is going to take it to the bottom roll it round and so you've created a little cross like that okay pop it back round and again and again now this depends on how long you have the wire, how long you want the links, all depends on that. So I'm not going to tell you how many times you need to wrap it round, I'm going to tell you how many times you need to make a loop, how many loops you make, or anything like that. So there you go, you're going to end up with a loop like that, if you can see that. I think you can, I think it's trying to focus on the roses. There we go. Okay. So we're going to take the other end and we're going to do exactly the same. So we're going to take it round and we're going to keep going round. And we're going to take it and we're going to wrap it. Now this one's quite a small little link. It gives you an idea of how much wire you may or may not need. Okay, so we're taking our flat nose pliers and we're just tucking that tail in just to make sure that there's no sharp bits. Okay, take it off, just tighten that up just a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So that is one link. Now I prefer my links a little bit longer. Some people like them shorter like this. I've made a nice short one. But what I am going to do now is I'm going to continue making the links. And then I'm going to show you how to put it all together. Okay. So I will be back shortly again with all the links made. Okay. Speak to you soon. And I'm back. So... As you can see, the chain is now complete. So I've done it with the fixing at the front. I think it suits the necklace better. And as I said to you that I was going to show you how we were going to fix the roses with a piece of copper. So the piece of copper here we've got is around 12 to 15 centimetres long. And again, it's 0 0.8. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to fix it so that only one side opens. So you're going to take your round nose pliers and you're going to start by making a half loop like that. You're going to thread one end of your chain through it, if you can see that. Put the round nose pliers back in and twist. So it, it's like you're making an extra loop, an extra link, sorry, but you're not. You're actually making the start of, of the connection for the roses. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a tail sticking out there. Just going to get my pliers and I'm going to tuck it back in. Now, I'm not using my normal chain nose pliers using the thinner set I find that I can get a better if you can see that I'm gonna I can get a tidier tidier finish okay so move the rest of the chain out of the way what we want to do is I'm knocking my it's the first time I've done it with the phone facing this way so you'll have to forgive me okay anyway as I was saying so what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to take the copper and we're going to thread it in the back of the rose. So the back of the rose is where all the copper is being held from the loop from making the rose, etc. Okay, so I just loosen that off a little bit, pop it through. Make sure it's out the other side and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our nylon pl nose pliers again. We're going to take the rose, make sure it's right through. This is where it's handy if you've left yourself quite a tail on the rose. Now, because this is at the back, you do need to make sure that any of these little wires you've got are tucked in. So make sure you tuck them in first. Yeah, my pliers slipping off the wire there. Probably easier to use your wide nose pliers at this point. Okay, so there we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze it all down. Okay all squeezed and there we have it so there is the first rose on the wire as you can see there is a little bit of movement there there's not a lot um it's personally the way i i'm i fix them on if you have a better way you you know absolutely do it the way you feel comfortable with doing it so again now we're taking the red one and again, we're working and we're threading it through the back. If I hadn't created the loop so tight, it'd be fine. There we go. Okay. So, and again, we're going to loop the little tail around just to make sure it's nice and secure. So what we don't want to happen is we don't want this lovely piece to fall to bits the first time it's worn. So please do make sure that all these are nice and tight. Okay. So we've got a bit of a tail sticking up on that one still, if you can see. So let's just make sure we get that tucked under. And down. There we go. And again. We're just going to tighten everything up with the nylon pliers. Okay, so there we go. We have two on there now. We just took that one out of the way as well. Now, because you've got copper here, it is going to be really quite flexible. So you can position your roses wherever you want to. You don't have to put them in the middle like I have, it's a personal choice. 
just the way I wanted the design to look. It's more to give you some sort of feel and idea as to what you can do for Valentine's Day. And also what you can do with coloured wire. Because sometimes you, you buy wire packs, etc. And there's coloured wire and you think, hmm, don't really know what to do with that. Well, here is a perfect solution. So this one's quite tightly tucked in. So this is the one I showed you earlier. So I'm just going to pick that piece up and tuck the wire through when it goes where I want it to go. There we go. If you can see that. So we've got the wire through on all three roses. And again, we're working at the back. Always when you're threading through, please work at the back. This does keep the front of it nice and neat. Um, there's little chance of this spinning or showing the back. It doesn't mean you can make the back untidy. However, it does make it easier for when you're threading it on. Okay? So, squeeze down again. Nice and tightly. There we go. Let's tuck those two little wires there across. Again, because this is going to be on the skin, do make sure these little wires are tucked away. What you don't want is you don't want it pulling on clothing or on somebody. Definitely don't want that. Okay. Let's curl it round. There's other options the way you can do this. You could add a... a um, a jump ring to it and thread them on that way there's so many ways you could do it okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the hook so take it round bend it back up now I'm bending it with my fingers just because I find it a little bit easier when I'm creating a loop or a hook like this. And I'm going to twirl, twirl this just to create a little bit of fanciness on the end there. That's just a basic swirl on the end. There we go, so there's the hook. The other side of the necklace clips in and there you have it. I'm going to turn it the right way around. There we go. There you have one copper rose necklace. Now it does take a good few hours to make. Please don't be starting this at ten o'clock at night and expect it to be finished by half past ten. Uh, that's it won't happen. It's taken me about three days in total. Um so yeah let me know what you think answers on a postcard as always let me know what you want to see what would you like to see next i'm thinking daffodils maybe um maybe not um show you this this is this is the red wire that i use this is the 0.8 mil red wire that's from charming beads copper wire again charming beads um much as they're beads, they also have a really wide selection of wire. And this is just a lovely example of how to create a necklace without any beads. Um, I'll pop some photos and there'll be some links, as always. Um, love to hear your feedback. Thank you very much for your time, as always. And I will speak to you all soon. Bye.